The day you take your newborn home is exciting and probably a little scary. You'll have many questions during the days and months ahead. Let's review discharge instructions for your newborn. These instructions are not intended to replace medical advice given to you by your newborn's care provider. In general, you should expect to have your first newborn follow-up appointment within one to three days after discharge from the hospital. It is important to keep your scheduled appointments because newborns need to be monitored closely for jaundice and excessive weight loss in the first weeks of life. You know your baby better than anyone else does, so anytime you feel something is not right with your newborn, you do not need to wait until your scheduled appointment to call their provider. Most offices have someone on call 24 hours per day. In emergency situations, call 911 for immediate assistance. These situations include, but are not limited to, difficulty breathing or wheezing, blue or pale skin color or blue lips, or any other illness or injury that seems life-threatening. Now, let's review normal newborn expectations and reasons you would want to call your baby's provider. Feeding. Feeding is an important time for you and your baby, and it is not uncommon to have questions. Babies need to eat at regular intervals around the clock and should not go more than four hours without being fed. You may need to wake your baby for feeding, especially if they are a little premature. If you're breastfeeding, it is important that your baby feeds 8 to 12 times in a 24-hour period. We know it is sometimes difficult to know if your baby is getting enough to eat. Watch for good latch, listen for swallowing, and monitor the number of dirty and wet diapers that your baby has. In the first six days, your baby should have at least one wet diaper for each day of life. You should also expect your baby to have at least one stool for each day of life in the first four days, and then four or more stools per day after that. It is normal within the first week of life that your baby may have concentrated urine that appears to be burnt orange in color. Your milk supply significantly increases between three to five days after delivery. Typically, as your milk supply increases, your baby's stool will gradually change in color and consistency and will become a yellow color and may have a green or brown tinge to it. It is normal for your baby's stool to be loose and seedy. It's important to note that using marijuana while breastfeeding may create feeding problems and poor weight gain. For formula-fed babies, your baby should start out eating one half to one ounce of formula every three to four hours. Each day, increase the amount so that by one week of age, your baby is taking at least two ounces of formula per feeding. Formula-fed babies usually have fewer stools with a pastier appearance. It can be normal for a baby to have a small amount of spit up after a feeding, so burping after feeds is encouraged. But if it seems excessive, projectile, or abnormally colored, such as green, red, or dark brown, notify your baby's provider. Let your baby's provider know if they still have black stools after five days of life, if they ever have blood in the stool, if they have diarrhea, or if your term newborn goes more than 48 hours without having a stool. A premature baby should not go more than 24 hours without having a stool. Whether you're breastfeeding or bottle feeding, your baby should be content during and after every feeding. If you have concerns about your milk supply or latch, contact an outpatient lactation consultant or your provider for further assistance or resources. If your baby is not meeting the minimum number of feedings or wet and dirty diapers each day, then it is very important to notify the baby's provider. Jaundice. Jaundice is the yellow color seen in the skin of many newborns. Most babies have a little bit of jaundice and this is normal. Severe jaundice can be dangerous if left untreated. Your baby's provider will be checking for jaundice at the first follow-up appointment. Please do not hesitate to call your baby's provider if your baby's skin or the whites of your baby's eyes are turning more yellow, if your baby's abdomen, arms, or legs are yellow, or if your baby is hard to wake, fussy, or not feeding well. Signs of illness. Your newborn doesn't have the same ability as an adult to fight off infections. To prevent infection, avoid crowds and always wash your hands. Some symptoms of infection could be refusing to eat, sleeping more or less than usual, crying more or becoming lethargic, or development of an abnormal temperature. 
a temperature less than 97 degrees or more than 100.4 degrees is cause for concern and should be reported to your baby's provider right away. A newborn can get very ill with the flu or pertussis, also known as whooping cough. So it is recommended that everyone who lives in your home or caring for your baby is up to date on their flu and Tdap vaccines, as well as other recommended vaccines. Contact your baby's provider if they experience persistent coughing, runny eyes or runny nose, swollen or red eyes, excessive eye tearing or eye discharge or drainage, white patches in the mouth, or any time you feel something is not right with your baby. Safety. The safety of your new baby is very important. It is important that all of your baby's care providers follow the ABCs of safe sleep. It is encouraged for your baby to always sleep alone, on their back, and in a clutter-free crib. It is encouraged to use sleep clothing, a Velcro sleep swaddler, or a zip-up sleep sack. Loose blankets are not recommended. Current laws state that babies should be in an approved rear-facing car seat for a minimum of two years. It's important for you to read your car seat manual and be familiar with proper installation and use. Always keep your baby in a smoke-free environment. This includes cigarettes, vaping, and marijuana. Healthy babies can cry a lot in their first months of life. Crying is the only way a newborn can communicate. Most newborns cry two to three hours a day, but some cry more. It is never a mistake to pick up your baby to comfort them. When your baby cries, check for obvious reasons for discomfort, including, but not limited to, hunger, dirty diapers, diaper rash, and gas. After checking these, it's okay to put your baby in a safe place and let him or her cry for a few minutes. Crying can be very frustrating. It's okay to walk away and calm down. Never shake a baby. Remind yourself that these hard times will come to an end. We encourage you to ask a support person for help. If you're worried about the amount of crying, have your baby checked by their provider. Cord care, bathing, and skin care. Many parents have questions about how to care for their baby's skin and umbilical cord. Your baby may or may not have had their first bath in the hospital. Newborns do not need to be bathed every day. A bath every two to three days is fine. When bathing your baby before the umbilical stump has fallen off, avoid getting the cord wet. While the cord is drying, it's normal for it to become blackened. The cord usually falls off between one to two weeks. Notify your baby's care provider if the umbilical cord area is reddened, irritated, foul smelling, or has any discharge. Newborn baby boys need no special care for their uncircumcised penis. Do not attempt to retract the foreskin. It will retract naturally in a few years. Infant girls may have a vaginal discharge that may appear white or pink tinged. This is normal. Girls should be wiped front to back to help prevent bladder infections. A newborn's skin is very sensitive and it can be normal for a newborn rash to appear. Their skin can often peel, especially on the hands and feet. Remember, when using baby skincare products, less is better and baby powders are not recommended. Notify your baby's provider if they have a diaper rash that looks very red, raw, or has white patches and does not seem to be improving. Thank you for allowing our team to take care of you and your baby. Please let your nurse know if you have any further questions or concerns before your discharge home from the hospital. This video was produced by the nursing staff on the mother-baby unit at Providence Sacred Heart Medical Center to help ease your way home.